This is my converted army truck that I turned into a house. Hi, my name's John. It's an M923A2, uh, 1987, and it was rehabbed at Little Rock back in 19... No, it was 2005, actually, it got rebuilt. So, if anybody knows anything about that stuff, there's all those numbers and letters for you. Yeah, there's a little camera up there. That's what watches the road. Well, this side is going to be uh, tin roofing and then siding, kind of like the other side, but a little bit more tin. And then, of course, you know, you got your water and all that other stuff that you need to have a house. Pretty much everything that's going on here is just because one night I was sitting around and I was sick and tired of looking at really expensive trailers and really expensive trucks to pull those trailers. And I pretty much just decided to go with a truck and trailer kind of together and just make a fusion of the two. So I only had to buy one thing, which made things a lot cheaper. Well, how I attained this guy here was I uh, got it from South Dakota at a government auction and it pretty much was brand new when I got it, which is the greatest part. Uh, the truck's name's Hank. I haven't named the house yet, but uh, someday when it's done, I'll name it. I live in uh, Sutter County, so that's in California. I decided to get this uh, truck pretty much because I'd been looking at making my own tiny house for a while, and I got it for pretty cheap. I'm not gonna say how much I got it for, mostly because I don't want people to go out and do the same exact thing just right now, maybe later. Well, mostly because I want to finish it before anybody copies it, because I'd like to make sure that it's safe before somebody else goes out and does it, because I haven't actually taken it over um, 45 miles an hour yet, so we'll see if it can make it at like 55. And then I'll let you guys know if it's safe, and then maybe somebody else can go out and do the same thing and do a little better job. But here's the bed up here, and that's pretty much where you sleep and watch TV and everything. And uh, sometimes there's a hammock strung up on the ceiling so there's more room and seating. Oh, that's the camera on the front of the tiny house. It's really used to watch the goats while they're outside cleaning the front yard. That's why I put it there at least. Now it's kind of nice because you can see people on the street, so that's cool. We have one of my uh, pet goats who lives here with me on the property right now. He actually, the whole reason I got them in the first place was to uh, help me clear out the front yard so I could park the tiny house there while I work on it. And now they're just kind of helpful little guys to have around. They eat all the stuff I don't want and uh, they're super cuddly. This one's Harvey, he's the boy. And uh, the other one's Charlie. She's kind of having a bad day today so she's just over there doing her thing. One of the reasons I set up a garden here at, you know, the house for right now is just because it's always nice to have a garden and grow your own vegetables and everything and that way I can use also use the compost from the tiny house and from the goats in the garden which kind of makes a nice little cycle and then I don't just have waste going in the garbage cans. Well, right now I don't have the bathroom finished yet. There's a toilet back there but there's no shower yet so I shower in the gym. So, you know, there's that. This is the bathroom in here. I'm not gonna go in there with you. I'll let you go in there and kind of look around. And it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, for them. It's not exactly huge, but it's, it's kind of big in tiny house standards, I guess. Yeah, no, I have a girlfriend and she comes over to the tiny house. I think having a girlfriend and having a tiny house kind of go together. It's pretty much just like having a date in a studio apartment. You just have to be mindful that you have two people in there. When I first told her I was building a tiny house and living in it, she was pretty blown away. And I think she was pretty excited because she was into the whole minimalist thing too. Eventually you get to the point where you're like, yeah, I kind of need a woman's touch because this is seeming really manly in here, maybe a little too manly. At one point the cabinets were red and black and this is just really bad. Over here we have our kitchen with uh, a stove and a sink and everything that you could need. Also cabinets with dishes inside and stuff written on them. Oh and I got a microwave. I forgot about that. That can bake cookies. So yeah, I've actually done that already. So. 
So right over here, we have the dining area. It's kind of made for one person, but the chair swivels over here and you can fit two people. This is obviously just a plant. So we're gonna move that out of the way. And this comes up and then there's stuff down there too, so. Oh yeah, there's a cat box for the cat. Um, there is a cat that lives out here in the tiny house with me. His name's Opie. He's not here right now because well, he's out doing cat things, I'd assume. He usually comes back at nighttime and he just kind of hops in through the windshield up there. And uh, it's, it's really loud when he comes home. You really know he's, you really know there's a cat coming home. And so over here we have the closet and some more storage for pants and stuff. And then the, the vacuum, which I'm not too fond of, but we won't get into that. Uh, I would say that uh, my girlfriend actually has less clothes than I do, and probably less possessions in general, like, considering that the like second date we went on, her house got robbed, so I don't think she's really replaced that stuff. No, I actually have way more stuff than she does, so there's that. But uh, no, we're not, we're not getting married. And if we come up here, this is actually the truck part that's actually what drives the whole tiny house, so steering wheel and everything just like you'd expect. Over here we have pretty much everything to drive our uh, our tiny house. Uh, switch that turns the battery on and then uh, the ignition right there. But it's really loud so I won't do that to you guys. But it does start up. It gets started like every week almost. So yeah, just everything you'd expect from like a 1980s truck. When I got it, it was not this posh and nice inside. It was really cold and dank with like no lights at all. You couldn't see anything. But now it's a lot better. There's lights everywhere and they all work, which is pretty nice. And we have some switches right here for all the stuff. There's even radar. It doesn't work right now though. That's the only problem. That's the only thing that doesn't work in the whole truck is the radar. And then the elephants over there. Those are for I guess like greetings and niceness. People leave them out to make sure that people know that they're not mean, I guess, or something. But it's supposed to be good luck to have elephants in your house. So those are my elephants. It does require a special license, but it's this really weird gray area. If you're a farmer, pretty much, you can drive a truck like this. So if you want to become a farmer, you can build your own tiny house on a truck like this. That's pretty much how the law states, so. Since uh, I drove trucks bigger than this in the military, I was able to get a special kind of license thing. So I can drive this truck just like a normal vehicle. So, cause really it's not that big. It's actually pretty tiny when you get it on the road next to all the other big rigs and everything. People ask me about my tires all the time. And uh, well, they're, uh, they're army truck tires so obviously they're you know the normal bulletproof and stuff and they also inflate themselves so that's really great and they deflate themselves to deflate themselves too so if you want to drive over like sand and stuff there's a whole system inside that controls the tires so that's awesome when it's working right when it's not working right apparently it's it's really terrible but I've only heard about that mine's never done that so that's that's cool, but yeah, no, the tires are huge, but they're pretty much brand new. I'd assume that, you know, once they get past the wear bars, I'd replace them, but so far, I mean, you know, it still has the little spokes on there still. And I do have a spare that came with the truck, along with a crane to uh, hoist it off the truck, because they weigh about 500 pounds, which is not fun for anybody. Ah, oh, I just used diesel. It's just a nice, good old-fashioned Cummings diesel. And uh, when I did fill it up, it was, um, well, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was like what you'd expect if you're filling up a big rig, I guess, you know? It's like 50 gallons or something, so not too bad. Right here we have my desk, which is where all the stuff kind of happens for the tiny house, all the drawings and designs and everything. And uh, there's a computer down there that controls everything in the house, pretty much. I wired it all up to do that. At least around here, people a lot more are a lot more open to it. Most often, I can count lots and lots of occasions that people drive by and ask questions and everybody's just curious about how it works and all the nuances that go into building your own house and stuff. I, I think I might be becoming a tourist destination. I'm really hoping that 
I move before that happens though. So then I'll be a tourist destination somewhere else. But no, there are, there've been a couple people that have said they came in from like somewhere else after hearing that, you know, hey, somebody's building this. And when I started building it, I didn't really think it was that big a deal. I thought, hey, this makes sense. It's cheap, it's not hard to do, and it's really tough. So, you know, it's not, it's really hard to break. It pretty much doesn't take any know-how to get it to work. You just have to know that if a line's broken, you have, probably have to fix that line, and that's the reason the whole truck's not working. There's this cabinet there, and a freezer with ice and stuff. So, and then a fridge, and the cabinets, more cabinets. Obviously, building a tiny house, you have to have a workstation. So this is kind of the workstation and the electrical station where all the fuses and the power comes in and everything. So there's that little guy and some other projects and a bunch of wires and other things for lights and stuff for the outside of the truck. This guy goes up and down too, of course, because in a tiny house you want everything to be able to fold up and get out of your way when you want room. And this is the inverter over here behind the chair and all that stuff going on that's the inverter it doesn't work right now because the only battery i have is just a little lawnmower battery i still need to buy the actual like batteries that get charged and everything and run the whole house there's that battery right there <laughs> yeah this is one of my plugs it's a pretty big plug it's like a 50 amp so that's a lot of electricity just in case you need it. And this is obviously like the air filter and all the truck stuff. Oh yeah, it's got electricity. I'm looking at putting solar panels on when the roof is done, but right now the roof isn't done. So no solar panels yet. Right now it's just plugged into what some people would call shore power, but there is an inverter and everything to power off batteries. Well, this is my music room. This is kind of a new addition. I didn't really know that this was gonna happen until a couple days ago. I just kind of woke up with an idea to Put the piano down here instead of trying to find spots for it in the house because honestly this was a place that i wasn't even using and you can't have those in a tiny house so now it's something i use now it's my uh, music room so the piano just sits up here and uh it's on a stand and you can still get to the driver's seat so that makes it great for like every friday when i start the truck up and do the whole checkpoint and everything you gotta be able to get to the driver's seat so this is my scarecrow he keeps the birds out of my uh, garden and, and uh, people and stuff like that. Uh, his name's Watson. He's named after a boss I had who uh, always seemed like he had a stick up his butt. Why not an RV? Well, I would looked at a ton of RVs and I just really didn't like what the RVs could do. And I, I didn't want to go gut a whole thing and then, and then start over when I could just start with a flatbed and build up from there. And then I knew everything that was done because I did it all. So. That was my plan and the inspiration really was just I wanted to build my own house and not have to buy property yet because I'm not old enough for that. So yeah, I'm 27. Well, yeah, of course I have other vehicles. I don't drive this to school. That would be kind of crazy. I thought about driving it to school several times because it is diesel and it does run really well. But no, I have a car and a motorcycle, so there's all those things. But uh, no, when I'm done, my plan is to uh, put the motorcycle inside the tiny house and tow the car behind it and then just go wherever. Maybe Oregon. So now pretty much the tiny house is completely independent on its own. Uh, has its own water. I'm working on putting in a uh, rainwater collection from the roof garden on top and uh, so eventually I won't even have to have it hooked up to the hose anymore so I can just get its own water from the roof. and. As it stands right now, the shower's still not done, but that's what the gym's for anyways, because you don't have to pay for water from there. So, as most other tiny house people know, if you can shower somewhere else, you do, because it's, it's cheaper and easier. It's not motivated by fears of civilization coming to an end, but it's definitely nice knowing that if it did, I would still be able to take a hot shower, so that's cool. My real motivation is just, I don't like being tied down. I like being able to go and do things and not ever having to hear the words, you know, oh no, I can't go there or go do that because I'm stuck. And when your house is on wheels, you're never really stuck, especially when your wheels are that big. All right, thanks for visiting my tiny home.